What's up people? I wanted to show you what my iOS 14 setup is like. Now I know iOS 14 isn't out yet, but if you want to download it, it's actually relatively stable and I would say it's pretty good for you to download. So skip to this time code or just go to the end of the video and I'll show you how to download it. Other than that, let's get into the video. This is my iOS 14 setup. It pretty much consists of three things. First, it consists of apps. Next, it consists of widgets. Lastly, it consists of others. Now, others is a subcategory. It basically has, you know, others, like random stuff. Doesn't really have a category. So I want to start out with my apps that I love to use on iOS 14. These apps aren't necessarily exclusive to iOS 14. These are just apps that I love to use. So if we start out, we can see that we have the email app. Now the email app, this is by Edison, and it's really good at sorting my emails. I find I get a lot of random emails, and when I get random emails, it'll actually show me what, what I want, and I, it's almost never been incorrect. It's basically an AI that tells you, hey, this is what you need to look at. So if we scroll through Google, look, we got all my emails right here. It actually sorts into a other category, uh, showing my no reply subscribe, like just random stuff that I don't need to look at. And it's pretty good at figuring out what I need to look at and what I don't. Next up, we have Fantastic Al. I know, this app's super overrated, and it costs five bucks a month, and it's really not worth it and it comes out of my own pocket here but i really love using this app mainly because it syncs with my computer and i can look at look at it through any web browser or anything what's really good about it is it knows what you mean when you type so if you go here and add i can say i want to add an event for right now so i'll just put now and then you'll see that it automatically puts it in the now category and so i'll say now record video and it will automatically type in, it'll know what I'm saying, what the title of it is, record video till five. And there we go, it adds on my calendar, record video till five. I didn't even really need to do all the process of dragging and dropping and everything, or typing or anything like that. It was super simple, and it really helps me stay on track for my days. Next up, we have one of my favorite weather apps, the Carrot Weather app. So I'll go into the Carrot app, and it's probably gonna curse at me. Nope, didn't curse at me, but it always has like funny relevance up at the top. And since Apple just bought up the Dark Sky app, which was previously my favorite app for weather, it still uses the Dark Sky weather information. So that means it's more up to date than most of the weather apps out there. And I really like the infograph. Now this app costs about five bucks, but it's one time fee. Next we have the Notion app. Now you can go down a deep rabbit hole of hey, this is what my Notion setup looks like and this is what I'm doing with Notion. I have little categories for everything that I do, like ideas, reminders, and I just jot down whatever information I need for that day or for that time. It Basically, your mind is the limit. You can program it to do anything you want. They have, you can implement web pages, Google Drive, Google Spreadsheets, you can put your, like everything that you need all in one app. And basically, it's fully customizable notes app. So that's why I really love it, and it's free. Now you might have seen on my home screen that I have a Tesla app, and I just wanna mention, I don't own a Tesla. This is just, you know, it's fun to have the app on your phone, so then when you walk by, people are like, do you have a Tesla? No, I don't have a Tesla. Now this one I've come to love, and it comes on your phone, the Reminders app. Now within iOS 14, I think it really enhances how this works, because the Reminders app shows, you can put it in categories. So I have a school category, a personal category, and I can put in video ideas, or things that I need to do, just whenever I need to do them. Then you can put in certain days what you need to do for that day and when the due date is, which is why I really like this one and it kind of helps me keep on track with things. Speaking of the Reminders app, I like to move to widgets. Now within widgets, you can actually add special reminders to your widgets. If we look at this complication right here, it'll show that the top widget is my Reminders app and everything that I have to do for that reminder. And it'll show me what's up next. So I just click it, click the reminder, and it'll bring me right into the page. What's really cool about this is you can actually edit it and do any list that you want. So you can add any to-do plans that you have. And now we have the to-do reminders right here, and we can swipe up, there's my calendar, swipe down, here's some more reminders in a different section. So you can basically put in the whole reminders app here, and it works out really well for me. Next up for widgets, as I mentioned earlier, the calendar app. Now, the calendar in the widgets is really nice. I like having it there just to get a quick glance of what I need to do next. So you can have the tiny calendar, which I also have the tiny calendar right here, and I have the big calendar right here. 
and the big calendar really shows me more of what I need to know so that way I don't have to go into the app if I want to read more on my tiny calendar. The charge widget is what I have up next. Um, this one, not that helpful unless you have AirPods or like an Apple Watch or any device that you want to connect to your phone. Now it is helpful for knowing how much charge you have on something like an Apple Watch which is nice to know since they added a bedtime feature in the new update where you're supposed to wear your watch when you sleep. Last but not least, the smart app widget. Now, this is a really secretive widget and I wouldn't suggest changing your whole home screen, but this widget will actually change your apps depending on which one you use the most. So if you look right here, here are some of my most used apps for that time and it'll actually let me open any of them. So if we shut off my phone, so these apps will change depending on the time of day it is or what you're doing that day. Uh, lastly is the accessibility features or the more features. Now this one's interesting because Apple implemented a feature called back tap where you actually just double tap the back of your phone and it will open up Google Assistant or whatever app you want it to. But what I find really inconvenient about that is anytime you drop your phone or let go of it or even just put it in your pocket, it'll misfire. And when you have it set up to the Google Assistant, it will actually pause any audio playing and start listening to what you're saying, which kind of sucks if it's in your pocket and you step on like a rock or something and your leg moves and double taps the back by accident. So I wouldn't suggest having that on. Hopefully in the near future, the feature gets better and I'll be able to use it. But for now, I have a little accessibility button that I can click. And then when I click once, it opens my Google Assistant, which is great because I don't even need to double tap the back anymore. It's just right there. And if I'm listening to music on Spotify, let's say, I also have this other app, it's completely free, it's called Music Match. Now when you're playing a song on Spotify, you actually double tap this little accessibility button and it will open up the Music Match app and start playing the lyrics for it. So that way you don't need, that way you don't need something like Apple Music or anything to see the lyrics of what you're listening to. And that's pretty much it for my iOS 14 setup. That's pretty much it for my setup. So let's get into how to download it. Downloading iOS 14 is actually pretty easy compared to past updates. It's one of the most stable betas out there. So if you want to download it, just simply go to the link in the description or go to Safari and type in betaprofiles.com. And when you go to betaprofiles.com, you see download Apple beta software. Scroll to whatever beta you would like. So iOS beta profile beta two and hit download. <laughs> That's it. That's all the process is. You got to hit allow and then you just go to settings and it's right there, right here. You hit install. And then after you install the profile, then you're actually able to go into your software updates and you can install the iOS 14 right there. Now it takes about an hour. And I do want to mention that on iPhone 10s specifically, they do heat up a lot. So you're going to not want to have as many apps running in the background, probably one or two for the most part. Sometimes I run three and it'll get really hot, but when you're in the car, be sure to turn on the air conditioner if you're using CarPlay or something like that. That way your phone doesn't overheat and crash. Anyway, that's it for this video. This was kind of a change of content. Um, and YouTube got rid of the poll feature, so I would ask if you, if you like this content or not. Uh, but I guess YouTube doesn't care, so that's fine. Just click this video or this subscribe button if you want to watch another video or subscribe. Thank you. I mean, click a button or leave. I don't, why are you sitting here?